Everywhere you look, the headlines are screaming the same thing. AI is a bubble about to burst. Startups are being valued at billions before even making a dollar in revenue. Investors are pouring in hundreds of millions, chasing what some are calling the next dot-com moment. The fear? That all this hype will collapse and leave a trail of failed companies behind. But what if that narrative is wrong? What if the AI market isn't a bubble at all, even as some companies inevitably fail? Gartner recently released a report that states, the current supply of agentic AI models, platforms and products far exceeds demand, which will result in consolidation and market correction. Wait, doesn't that mean there is a bubble? Well, no. We got in touch with Will Sommer, Senior Director Analyst at Gartner, to discuss this very thing and I'll tell you all about it on this episode of Point Break. Let's start with the fundamentals. Gartner's recent research shows a clear disconnect between the number of agentic AI providers and actual market adoption. Companies are launching these advanced AI agents, but adoption remains shallow. Implementation failures are high. Customers are dissatisfied with pricing and concerns about hallucinations, liability, and security persist. Um, from our perspective, like you said, there's a clear disconnect between the number of providers offering agentic solutions in the market and the size of the market for this technology, right? Um, if we look at the demand side, we've produced extensive research, I'm happy to get to in more detail, indicating that adoption of agentic AI has been shallow and patchy, that implementation mm -hmm. failure rates are high, that customers are generally dissatisfied with how AI agents are being priced right now, and that there's still a lot mm -hmm. of concern about hallucinations, liability, and security when AI agents are making decisions independent of people. On the supply mm -hmm. side, agentic AI systems are expensive to produce, and their features are generally ahead of where customers are. And basically, overall industry costs were made well above revenues, which we, sorry, overall, if industry costs remain well above revenues, which we think they will for at least the next few years, a market correction characterized by consolidation is inevitable from our perspective. Markets will necessarily rationalize and consolidate towards a handful of providers with the scale and resources to sustain this technology to maturity, right? And I think a, a you know understandable question is, well, does this mean that we're in a, a bubble of some kind, right? Is this a bubble behavior? Is the bubble going to burst? Is there going to be some sort of large uh, disruption? To the environment. And from our perspective, defining terms here matters, right? Um, our position is at present, there is no AI bubble. Bubbles are generally financial phenomena in which market valuations become disconnected from intrinsic value, often driven by speculation, fraud, financial engineering, or some other type of distorted policy, right? And we're not saying by any means that every investment in agentic AI will pay off, right? And that the market will grow indefinitely uninterrupted. But we are saying, and what we can say with absolute certainty, I think, is that many agentic AI companies will fail, merge, or be acquired as the market concentrates towards a few dominant providers that um, capture what we think will ultimately be a multi-trillion dollar market for AI solutions. The process of consolidation is normal. It's an expected part of the product life cycle, but it's fundamentally distinct from a bubble. Right. The winners of key AI races will ultimately dominate markets worth hundreds of billions of dollars. This isn't hallucinatory value. Um, what I'll caveat and say is that right now, while we don't see a bubble, there, of course, remains plenty of risk in markets. And we're going to keep tracking those risks. Right, Circular investments are a concern. Infrastructure overbuild is a concern. Um, historically, large investments in early stage companies are all concerns. But from our perspective, that's not bubble type behavior yet. So. Bringing that all together, right? Generally, what we think is that you're going to see some type of consolidation. Many companies will merge, be acquired, or fail, but that's not a bubble per se. Will Sommer explains it's a natural phase in the life cycle of emerging technology. In other words, we're not looking at a bubble. We're looking at a market with too many players for the current demand. Gartner highlights that the proliferation of AI providers launching agentic models Agenting integrated platforms and other agent-infused products far exceeds the present demand. This oversupply is forcing the market to rationalize and consolidate, much like previous corrections in energy, telecommunications, and even the dot-com era. So the next big question is, who survives? Sommer points to two major differentiators, proprietary data and ecosystem. But generally, we think there are going to be two major moats 
right, in this new agentic AI space. One is going to be data, right? The ability to use and apply data to produce agentic systems that can accurately, you know, do all of the things that humans can do now and more, right? The second is going to be ecosystem, being able to build these large integrated networks that allow seamless connection between what today are many different applications run by many different companies, right? Being able to scale and sustain the technology to maturity is going to be the end differentiator between winners and losers. So, so can we sum it up and say the ones who are not having deep pockets are already out of the race? Because that is one of the key things. Yeah, I mean, from our perspective, right, there are many ways to win a race. Um, at the end of the day, a winning strategy can be being a target for acquisition. It can also be identifying a new market for which today there isn't a dominant incumbent, right? What those markets look like, what they're going to be, who's to say, right? This is still an emerging technology. We're still very early in this race. But while deep pockets are going to be a key differentiator, it's not the only way to win in these emerging AI races, right? And there's not just one agentic AI race. There are many agentic AI races for different applications. Now let's tackle the elephant in the room, valuations. Startups are raising money at eye-watering levels often pre-revenue. Could that indicate a bubble? Soma is skeptical. Yes, there are going to be companies that are overvalued. There are always companies that are overvalued. The question of whether or not we're in a bubble is, is the market as a whole overvalued? And from our perspective, the winners of these AI races are going to be able to dominate multi-hundred billion dollar markets, right? And so the way that companies are approaching the current environment is that only one or two, maybe three companies will ultimately win in any given race, those companies will dominate market share, and that market share will be massive, historically large. So from our perspective, this isn't a bubble in that there isn't hallucinatory value behind these investments, right? The investments generally are being made in the private sector still or by incumbent companies with significant resources to continue their, their investments, at least in the short term. And like I said, who, whoever is able to bring that product to fruition, become the dominant market player, they're going to win a massive market. And of course, we obviously wanted to know if there is something these companies can be prepared for, something they need to be wary of. And Soma had an interesting take. Two different sets of recommendations, right? The first recommendation is for larger companies. So that doesn't really answer your question. But you know, for larger companies, we're saying, look at, look at the market, look for early signs of consolidation, and then pick out companies where it's cheaper to buy than it is to build. Right. For smaller companies, it's a different equation. Right. What we're saying is you either need to have a differentiated product that other companies want to buy, and that's your exit strategy, or you need to enter a niche market that at this time, you know, isn't very large, doesn't have a lot of interest in it, and you need to dominate that market. What's complicating the picture. Uh, even further is Gartner surveys, right? We do a lot of surveys with um, senior executives. Gartner surveys of CEOs and startup executives indicate that the time period during which technology advancements um, are still relevant is shrinking, right? The ability of artificial intelligence to um, develop at pace at, at higher speeds is making it so that you have a much smaller window when your technology is actually valuable to the big players. So there's going to be a lot of pressure to make decisions very quickly as to whether or not you sell your you know, new advanced product or you try to pivot into a niche market. Of course, there's a lot of media attention to the circular investments that we're seeing right between companies like OpenAI, NVIDIA, AMD. But whether or not that's just a means of financing for those companies or it has underlying market weaknesses, we can't tell. Right? We won't know for some time. The same goes for these really high valuations for startups that, that may not have a product yet or whose product may not be you know, generating revenue. It's the old you know, dot-com eyeballs versus revenue dynamic, right? where certain investments are being made pre-revenue. Um, that could be a challenge, right? That that could result in uh, risk. The same goes for the infrastructure overbuilt. It's a massive amount of investment, right? More than broadband again in the early 2000s. Um, but 
you know, from our perspective at this time, we expect that um, demand will keep up with supply and that infrastructure is fungible, unlike in the 2000s, right? Microchips can be exchanged, moved, substituted, used for different purposes. A broadband cable is a broadband cable. None of those risks, to me, stand out as red light blinking right now, right? But is it something that we're going to continue to watch and we're going to continue to report on? Absolutely. So here's the takeaway. Yes, there will be failures. Yes, some valuations may seem dizzy. And yes, the market will consolidate. But none of this means that AI as a sector is a bubble waiting to burst. According to Gartner, this is a natural correction, an expected phase in the life cycle of a transformative technology. The winners, those who combine deep pockets with differentiation, proprietary data, and robust ecosystems. The nimble players, they pivot, dominate niche markets, or become acquisition targets. And the companies that fail, often those with undifferentiated offerings, unable to scale or secure a clear value proposition. And looking ahead, Gartner predicts that with consolidation, large providers will establish expansive integrated ecosystems and domain-specific models, significantly improving agentic performance. This is how AI moves from experimentation to real productivity gains. So the next time you hear the word AI bubble, pause, look closer. The hype may be loud, but the market is bigger than the headlines. The shakeout is in the end. It's a reset. Follow Point Break for more such insights on the forces shaping AI tech and the future of innovation. I'm Mandana Nair, and don't forget to stay sharp, stay curious, and think AI, think AIM. <laughs>